Here in America, pickup trucks have constantly been the number one selling vehicle for years. In fact, if you look at the sales pie, GMC Sierra has always been number three, right behind the sister vehicle, the Chevy Silverado, and of course, the best selling Ford F-150. So today I'm in Jackson Hole, Wyoming with three of their newest trucks they have to offer for 2020. The all new 2020 Sierra HD, both in 2500 and 3500. And of course, a new engine option in the Sierra 1500, which is their three liter Duramax diesel inline six cylinder engine, which we'll be able to drive. So today we're going to be towing with these vehicles. We're going off road. We're going to be driving these things on the road. So the big question I want answered after driving all three variations of their newest trucks, do these new vehicles actually represent their we are professional grade image. That's what we're here to find out. So I'm here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We're driving three different vehicles from GMC. This one here is the AT4 half ton with the new three liter Duramax diesel. And GMC has set up this uh, rather challenging looking off-road course. So we're gonna take this out on the course and we're gonna see how this truck does. Remember, this is the AT4 with all the off-road goodies. So we're going to use your front camera quite a bit. Okay. Um, so basically you're going to just come down here, square up on the hill, and then uh, going up this is going to be just light. Slow down. You just want to do um, just gentle throttle, steady uh, to the top. Okay. I barely actually have to push the gas. It's kind of just crawling up on its own. That camera is really useful here for sure. You can yeah. see what's over those rocks. Ooh. Now when we, when we start to go on that stop right here. Okay. All right, we're gonna put hill descent control on. Okay. So see that little green yep. indicator? So this will limit the speed to two? Two to three miles per hour. Okay. Yep. So then you just let off the brake. Wow. That basically walks the truck out for us. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow, I am like, this looks very low. I'm like, oh, this for clear. <laughs> right, this is like a parking garage test. <laughs> so when we come up to this, when you get upright, a little bit further, a little bit more. Okay. All right, now give it a break, hard stab. Uh, let off the brake. And this is our uh, no hold assist. Okay. So it will hold us here. Okay. Until you give it throttle. That's nice. Yep. That is really nice, okay. It even tells you there, hill assist active. Yeah, how do people do this without this camera? You can't see anything. <laughs> I guess that's what the spotter's for, right? Yeah, right. You're head out the window. <laughs> and how much ground clearance does this truck have again? Uh, so this is uh, nearly 11 inches. Wow, okay. So it's like an inch or two more than the standard? It's, it has a two inch lift on it. Okay. So you pick up from that. <laughs> and when you come up to these logs, go ahead and stop for me. Okay. And we're going to go slow over the logs. I almost felt bad the truck was so clean and now it's all <laughs> yeah, dirty. Right. Somebody had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess trucks look better when they're dirty anyways, right? <laughs> so we come up to this uh, stop and maybe go neutral and put it back into high. Okay. You can go too high too. Oh. Hold on. Or I guess auto. So I feel kind of bad. I got the truck really dirty, but it looks better with the mud on it, right? <laughs> So because I'm on this really short media drive, my time with these trucks is pretty limited. So I'm gonna actually combine the diesel Duramax light duty with the heavy duty version of this truck, but I'm gonna mostly focus on the heavy duty version because you guys have seen my videos on the light duty. So if you guys are looking to watch that, please be sure to click on the link in the description below where you can see the full overview of an AT4 and a Denali trim truck. Now this particular one that I'm showing you here is the 2500 crew cab short bed. It's probably the most popular configuration for a heavy 
heavy duty truck. And if you guys know the design of the 1500 and look at this, you can instantly see the family resemblance. GMC really hit it out of the park in terms of the design. This truck looks handsome. It looks completely different versus the previous generation. As you can see, the grill is just massive. I mean, I'm a relatively short and small person. So the fact that the top of the hood comes up to like my chin, is an indication of just how big this truck is. This particular one here is the AT4 trim. So instead of all the blingy chrome that you got on the Denali, you get some nice blacked out looking trim. Full LED headlights are actually gonna be standard across the board, even on the base SLE trim. Uh, this one here has LED low and high beams. It's got LED fog lights and LED turn signals. So overall, I like what they've done with the design. Now, one thing you're also noticing, it's got a functional hood scoop here on the hood only if you guys go for the Duramax diesel. This one here has the 6.6 .6 liter gas engine, so the hood, is, the hood scoop is actually uh, fake as opposed to the functional ones that you'll get with the diesel engine. Now, this truck is big. Honestly, the half-ton model is already big. This one is even bigger. Basically, you're gonna be looking at a foot longer in wheelbase and overall length versus a half-ton. Compared to the previous generation, GMC actually made the wheelbase five inches longer and 10 inches longer overall. So this one has a 153 inch long wheelbase and its overall length is almost 240 inches long. So if you don't like driving big vehicles, you're not gonna to wanna to drive something like this, but the bigger the better, right? If you're gonna be towing, you're gonna to be you know, trying to drive this thing on longer trips. It's just much more comfortable. Now, obviously you get specialized tow mirrors when you guys go for the HD models. These mirrors will actually extend out. They have an LED turn signal in them. They have spotlights in them. They've got a blind spot mirror and they also have blind spot monitoring. So there's some safety tech in this car. What is missing frustratingly is adaptive cruise control. You still can't get that on the HD. GMC has made it an option for 2020 on the light duty trucks. Now, as I, as I said earlier, crew cab model. So this has uh, three inches more legroom in the back, which I'll show you guys that in a second. And then this is the shorter bed. Uh, this has a six foot, six inch bed. If you guys want the longer bed, it'll give you an, just over an eight foot bed. So if you guys are looking for the eight foot bed capability with the crew cab, you have to go to the HD, which is why GMC does that because they don't want you to buy that on the light duty truck. You can't simply get that. Now, um, over on the wheel sizes, these are actually a 20 inch wheel that you get with the AT4. They're part of the AT4 premium package. They're wrapped in all-terrain tires. These are uh, Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires. It looks good. I love the black finish. Again, I much prefer this over the chrome that you get all over the Denali trim. This just looks more aggressive to me. Now at the rear, you can see the taillights are practically identical again to the light duty truck. And then GMC is very proud of their multi-pro tailgate, which this one has. If you push this in unison, you can see the tailgate opens up. You can also create a little step here to help short people like myself get into the bed. There's a little handle here. We actually have about 2000 pounds of chopped uh, wood in the bed of this truck, which we'll be driving uh, back to our uh, location for lunch. Now, a couple of new features. There's actually a built-in kicker sound system here in the bed, which is a late availability, availability. So if you guys plan to do some tailgating, this might be a really uh, cool option for you. I do love the fact that you, know, you have this little integrated step. When you close the tailgate again, you can see, you can also just open up this portion here and then open this up, which was the tailgate step, and then it kind of creates a little uh, bed extender where you can actually keep some of the bed open. Now, obviously, GMC is very proud of this tailgate. I actually think it's better versus the split tailgate that Ram just is currently offering on the new Ram because it doesn't have quite the level of adjustability that GMC offers. There's also still the option of that carbon fiber bed, uh, which they'll have at the lunch demonstration later. I'll hope to show you guys that later because GMC says it's one of the most um, strongest beds that you can get in the uh, industry. Now, moving on to the interior of the HD, thank God for these running boards and this grab handle here to help short people get in this vehicle. Now, um, getting in this truck is pretty much what you expect from any other HD truck. You have a very big hood that you have to look over. So those of you who are uncomfortable with that, you may not be able to drive something this big. Now, shut the door. It actually sounds relatively solid. Uh, it sounds very similar to the 1500 that I drove last year. Now, push button start and smart key entry is obviously included with this trim. It also has a remote start. You can also open up the bed from this key fob. This one here has the gas V8. So it has that typical GM startup, uh, the bong, and then the gauges do a nice sweep. Now, if you guys are very familiar with the interior of the uh, light duty truck, it's basically a carbon copy. So I'm not gonna go too much into debt with this interior because it looks as if GMC literally just did a tr copy and paste with the interior. In fact, I think it's a little too similar, but I will keep in mind that the rest of the HD trucks have a very similar interior as well. But with GMC's interior, Chevy too, it's almost as if GMC didn't even look at what Ram was doing with their interiors because for a truck that has, you know, an over 60 to almost 
$80,000 price tag. This interior feels a little Spartan. It feels a little basic in here and it makes me sad because they're supposed to be professional grade. I just don't know if I see it in the interior. Now granted you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto that's standard but this 8 inch touchscreen display looks like a 5 inch display in this massive dashboard. I think GMC should have really made the screen either wider or did the 12 inch tablet style orientation that RAM is doing. This to me just looks very dated. It's going to look dated you know, for years until GMC finally decides to upgrade the interior. Now the materials, it's soft touch on the dashboard. It's got some faux stitching over here. It's got these two glove compartments over here, which uh, this one here is a better size versus this one. It's not damped, but it is lined with felt. You have a little bit more storage up here. The door panels are also soft touch. So there's at least some good soft touch materials in here. The design's just a little bit on the boring side and it just shows that they weren't really trying. Now where they did try is in the technology. And GMC really threw the book when it comes to technology with this vehicle. Let's go back to the actual GMC area here. Um, trailering, obviously this has the pro grade trailering that you can get on the light duty trucks where this truck will also offer basically a uh, transparent view. If you've got a trailer hooked up back there, it'll use the camera in the bed or on the back of the truck and the, ca the camera that's on the trailer. And it'll actually display an image that sees through the trailer. So that's an industry first. GMC is very proud of that. I actually had a chance to look at that while we were on this drive. It's very cool. This camera offers like 15 different views. So going over here to the camera, you can see here 15 different views and the quality is also not bad. You can see there, you can see like a top down view. You can show exactly what's on your side. This one here shows what's closer to your wheels. You can change the view over here. You can show what's in the bed and you can show the trailer hookup. So this is all very nice. The graphics also is not too bad. I'm not gonna complain too much about that. I especially like this view over here. I think it looks really cool, but it would just look so much better if the screen was larger. So I don't know what GMC is doing. They should have really gone with a much larger screen. Here's the home screen here. You can see the uh, light duty Sierra also got updated with this newer infotainment system. It's got Apple CarPlay and Android, as I said. It's got a built-in embedded navigation system, which is their newest system. You can see it is much quicker to respond. The graphics, they kind of just look like ordinary graphics it's nothing too special but again this isn't Cadillac so I would probably you know dock this car more if it was the uh, Cadillac infotainment system and the steering wheel you can see it's tilt and telescoping which is nice the gauges aren't really any different versus what I showed you in the light duty in fact if you guys look at the interior of the Silverado they're identical aside from the steering wheel where it's got a GMC or a Chevy badge so uh, I think GMC should have done a little bit more differentiating now over here gigantic center console, wireless phone charging over here. You've got a USB-C and a USB port. You've got heated and cooled seats, which is really nice. It's actually included on the AT4 trim and the Denali trim. Heated steering wheel. There's a couple of buttons over here for your lane departure alert. There's no adaptive cruise control, as I said. They did add it for the uh, light duty version for 2020. There's a couple of hard buttons over here. They're blank because this is for the diesel exhaust a brake button. That's uh, obviously not going to be included on the gas model. You actually can get the diesel exhaust brake on the light duty truck, which you can't get uh, on the Ram. And I'm not entirely sure if Ford offers it uh, either. But overall, this cabin, it's very much deja vu. I wish that GMC had done something to differentiate it, but it's still relatively comfortable. The seats on the AT4 are a little bit more unique. You have this, you know, two-tone with the contrasting stitching. They're relatively comfortable, but um, the leather itself could be a little bit softer, especially when you guys look at the Denali trims. Uh, it's just not the softest leather. The sunroof above me here is just a standard size moonroof. So if you guys are looking for a panel roof, you're gonna have to go to the competitors. Now here in America, pickup trucks are extremely popular family vehicles and all you have to do is get into the back seat to see exactly why. Now, this crew cab model is obviously going to be the more popular choice for families here. And because GMC stretched the wheelbase by five inches, you get 43 inches of legroom. That's why I said 43 inches of, inches of legroom. There's a completely flat floor back here. You have heated rear seats. You have two USB ports. You have air vents. You have cup holders. You have an armrest here that folds down, uh, gives you two cup holders. Now, the one thing with this back seat, unlike the Ram uh, competitor, the back seat doesn't recline or anything. Ram is what offers that. You also can't really adjust these. You can actually flip this seat up to reveal a little bit of storage uh, back there, which is really good, although it's not much in terms of covered storage. Let me actually see if Nope, no covered storage on this side either, which you can get on some of the competitors. But as you can see here, uh, with all this legroom, with all this headroom, um, this truck obviously is a really great vehicle for families. But one thing you're not going to be able to get, no panoramic sunroof. You can get that on some of the uh, competitors from the big three. 
So every time I review these big trucks, I'm constantly reminded at how short I am at five foot seven. Thankfully, when I lift up the hood of both of these trucks, they're, they're held up by struts. So I don't have to sit there and try to reach the top of the hood with a prop rod. Now let's start with the light duty truck because this engine is really hotly anticipated. It's the third engine option, or I'm sorry, it's the fifth engine option in the light duty truck segment. Uh, and it's also the last one of the light duty trucks from the big three to offer a diesel. This is different, however, from the Ford and the Ram. It's an inline six. The Ford and the Ram use a V6. So an inline six means it's more inherently balanced, which, which we'll talk about that in the driving portion. Now this actually makes the most horsepower in the segment. At three liters, it makes 277 horsepower. That's about 17 more than what you're gonna get in the new Ram uh, and about 37 more than what you're gonna get in the Ford, which has like 250. Now torque, unfortunately, it doesn't have the most torque. This still makes very good numbers at 460 pound feet. Compare that to the 440 in the Ford and 480 in the Ram. So Ram again has um, the bragging rights for the torque. This has the bragging rights for the horsepower from this three liter turbocharged Duramax diesel engine. Now it all goes out through a 10 speed automatic transmission. This is a GMC design transmission. And fuel economy, unlike the Ram, uh, they already have certified EPA numbers. If you guys go for the two wheel drive, the rear drive model, you're gonna get up to 23 in the city and 33 on the highway. 33 on the highway and a truck that weighs over 5,000 pounds. Now this one here being four wheel drive, uh, it gets 23 in the city and 29 on the highway. Now keep in mind again, this runs on diesel. It also runs on uh, diesel exhaust fluid, so DEF fluid. Now GMC says the DEF fluid uh, can hold about seven gallons and you're going to basically be adding more fluid between every five to 7,000 miles. So they were trying to keep that interval in line with the oil changes. Now this one here obviously is four wheel drive. We'll get this one out on the road and we'll drive it later and we'll figure out if the diesel is really the, op the engine option to get versus the four other engines they offer in this truck. So let's move over to the HD because because there's two new engines to talk about in the HD truck. So as you can see next to the HD truck, I'm even shorter because this thing is even taller and it just opens up higher. I'm just, I'm really short. But this one here is actually the motor that most people probably aren't going to purchase, but it's interesting how GMC is introducing an all new gas V8. This replaces the old six liter V8 that was in the previous generation. It's now 6.6 .6 liters. It's also got direct injection. It's the first uh, heavy duty truck to offer gasoline direct injection, and it makes about 40 more horsepower now. 401 horsepower and 464 pound-feet of torque. That's more power than what you're gonna get in the Ram with its 6.4-liter uh, Hemi, but Ford's 7.3-liter uh, gas V8, which will be coming out uh, later this year, that probably that actually has more horsepower than this, but GMC claims that you know this engine will basically tow the same amount at all altitudes versus some of the competitors. If you go up at higher elevations, they say you're not gonna be able to tow as much. Now, the gas engine is only paired with a six-speed automatic transmission. That's a GMC design transmission. It's kind of a carryover transmission uh, versus the diesel. Now, obviously the diesel is what most people are gonna get in the HD world. It's still a 6.6 .6 liter engine. So that's gonna confuse the hell out of you when you're just looking at the badge. And really only on the fenders is where it's gonna tell you whether it's the 6.6 .6 gas or the diesel. The diesel makes the same power as the previous gen at 445 horsepower and 910 pound-feet of torque. Now that horsepower puts it right in the middle between the Ford and the, sh and the Ram, uh, and the torque figure is actually on the lower end. The Ford and the Ram offer a little bit more. Ram's got the bragging rights with over with almost a, th or a thousand pound-feet of torque on the high output versions. Now towing is really where it's all at for a vehicle like this. Now. GMC has really significantly improved the towing capability of these trucks. At a maximum, they're gonna tow 35,500 pounds. Now that's gonna come with an asterisk because that only applies to the regular cab two wheel drive with the long bed. Who in the world is going to buy that? This kind of truck right here that I'm showing you is gonna have like around an 18,000 pound towing capacity. Payload is also gonna be around 3,500 pounds. But uh, if you guys go for the long bed two wheel drive truck, that will carry a maximum of 7,400 hundred pounds in the bed, which is a little bit less than what you're going to get in the Ford and the Ram competitors. Now that one truck over there with the diesel, I forgot to mention also tows about 9,200 pounds. That is a little bit less than what you're going to get from its competitors as well. Still very competitive. Its max payload will also be around 1,500 pounds. Oh, and fuel economy. Now, of course, last but not least, fuel economy, that's just not required to be rated on these big trucks. So that makes my job a little bit easier. <laughs>
<laughs> so last year when I first drove the 1500, I thought the 5.3 and the 6.2 V8 engines are very good engines. They're very proven engines. Um, so I was really excited to drive the diesel version of this truck because obviously uh, the diesel offers up to 33 MPG, which when I said I was on a short media drive, I really am on a short media drive. So I'm gonna have to wait until I drive this thing later on. But what I just wanna test out is just the acceleration because diesels aren't about quick acceleration. They're about great off, they're about great mid-range torque. So it's in drive, just put my foot down here. A little soft. Ooh, very nice. And of course, diesels have very low red lines, so you're not going to be, you know, racing this thing like I just did. But what you do feel is once you get pa once you get past the turbo lag, there's an initial lag. But then, when you're in the meat of the power band, which is between 2,500 to about 4,000 RPM, this thing feels quick, and it feels like it gets to 60 around the seven second mark. Um, obviously, the 6.2 V8 is faster. But this would probably keep pace with the 5.3. I'd say it's it's very close to the the way the 5.3 accelerates. I think this truck feels good. The engine itself is also very smooth. Remember, this is an inline six. It's not the V6 that you get in some, some of the competitors. So when the engine is revving out, it just, you know, is very smooth uh, smooth when it does it. It's got a really responsive, you know, GM design 10 speed transmission. So I'm relatively impressed with this. At least, you know, on this very short initial drive, I literally only have about uh, 10 minutes with this uh, engine because we've got so many different uh, trucks to drive. So let me hop into the uh, HD again uh, and let's test out the uh, what that truck is like to drive with the different engines. Now GMC claims this truck is riding on an all new frame which is technically similar to the half ton truck that I showed you. It's got updated transmissions, it's got even more towing capability. In fact, this particular one that I'm showing you here, the 3500 is capable of towing a maximum of 35,500 pounds. And we're also gonna be towing this massive 14,000 pound trailer at, in the back. We're not gonna die, we're not gonna die. We're gonna die. We're not gonna die. All right, so I'll be honest. I have towed, in the past, I would probably call myself a novice tower. I mean, I towed probably a speedboat that's half the length of this or half the weight of this. This truck is capable of towing about 30,000, this particular one here. So we're only at about half the weight, the maximum weight. But I would be lying if I said I wasn't nervous, so I'm gonna try my best to not crash into anything while I'm driving this thing back to the resort. <laughs> try my best not to <laughs> crash into anything. Good. <laughs> So this particular one has the 6.6 liter Duramax diesel. The engine itself is nearly $10,000 extra, which is actually the norm. You're typically gonna spend at least $7,000 for a diesel engine in this segment. Uh, 445 horsepower and 910 pound-feet of torque. It's not the most in the segment. The Ram technically offers 1,000 foot-pounds of torque, but this is one of the higher horsepower in the segment, at least until Ford tells us the output of their new Power Stroke diesel. Oh, we didn't put it into the GPS. <laughs> Great, we're just gonna drive down the road. <laughs> uh, Fireside yeah. Resort. Now, will start now, is that the route we're supposed to take though? Because I don't want it to put us on some side back road. No, no, this is the route. Well, this is, they just said use the GPS. So that's all I'm doing, I'm using the GPS. So I would be lying if I said I wasn't nervous, but so far the truck has a lot of technology in it that makes it feel a little bit easier you're towing. You just have to remember you got to take turns a little bit slower, a little bit wider to make room for the trailer. Okay, my foot's to the floor here. Come on. <laughs> you got to wait for that turbo to spool up. This engine has a fair amount of turbo lag, which is typically the norm when you're talking about a big, you know, V8 that's a turbo diesel. But I will say that the engine is smoother than the last diesel truck that I drove, which was probably five or 10 years ago. Um, these engines have just gotten way more refined, way smoother. There are times where I did, you know, put my foot down and it felt like I was driving a school bus because it does make a louder, like, fan noise when you're first initially stepping on the gas and accelerating. But once the truck gets going, it actually settles down into a very quiet idle. Uh, the steering in this truck is very light, which is what you want. You don't want it to be really heavy and you don't want it to be also very quick. This is a very slow ratio steering because you're pulling something behind. But I will say that the mirrors on this truck do help. Uh, the truck also has blind spot monitoring, which is good because it helps with visibility. You can't really see very well, but the mirrors do help a lot. The mirrors also, they are tow mirrors, so they do expand. You can push a button right here and they will 
basically extend further out because you need to be able to see what's around the trailer when you do that. But I'm going to probably take it easy most of the time. But I have to say, for somebody who has never towed something this big, it was a little nerve-wracking at first, but once you kind of get used to the size, uh, the truck, you know, it, it stays very stable. Uh, the engine, you know, you obviously have to be patient when you're towing this heavy of a load, but it stays smooth. It doesn't really feel like it's struggling. The 10-speed transmission, this is an Allison branded transmission. Uh, that's something I'll talk about later on when, we're, when I'm not towing something behind it, but it's uh, it's got four more gears in the previous generation, and it's got two more gears in the new Ram Heavy Duty. Um, so it's it's a nice improvement, uh, although I, I'm sad to say that GM didn't, GMC didn't actually add any more power to this truck for the 2020 model year. It still makes the same, you know, 910 foot-pounds of torque, which is a lot of power, but I guess Ram has the bragging rights with a thousand pound-feet in the newest one, but it only has 400 horsepower versus this car, this truck's 445. So we drove the light duty diesel. Uh, I drove the 3500 diesel when it was towing something. Unfortunately, time is always tight on these programs. So now I've switched to a 2500 with the 6.6 .6 liter gas V8. Now this actually really surprised me and it's also confusing because the gas and the diesel are both 6.6 .6 liter engines. So um, 401 horsepower and 464 pound feet of torque. This truck weighs around 6,500 pounds. So it's un, or it's got 2,000 pounds of crap in the back right now. Let's put our foot down. The engine makes a very nice sound, but it makes me quickly realize why people choose uh, a diesel engine when they go for a, a truck like this, because you definitely feel like the engine is a little light on torque. I mean, 464 pound-feet of torque is a good amount of torque, but come on, like with the diesel, it makes 910 pound of your torque, so double the torque. You really feel that when you are trying to pass this thing, especially if you got a lot of weight in the back of the truck. You're gonna feel you know, that hesitation. You're gonna feel the fact that you've got to rev the engine out. Now, this is the six-speed automatic transmission, and it definitely feels like it's down uh, two gears. It, it kind of knocks the engine out of its power band, um, which you know is not what you want it to do. So I'm surprised that GMC didn't at least go with an eight-speed transmission or just do their 10-speed automatic like they've got already in some other vehicles. Now, the HD version of this truck definitely feels a lot bigger. The hood is so massively huge. For somebody that's short like me, you kind of have to adjust the seat to look over the hood. And this truck with the 2,000 pound payload in the back, it feels like it gets to 60 in around 10 seconds. It feels sluggish. Granted, I've got stuff in the back. That crap in the back does make the ride quality smoother. I am noticing that uh, compared to the 3500 that I drove when it was unladen, the ride was a little bouncy. This is a lot smoother. Remember, this truck has an independent front suspension, which GMC says that the competitors actually have a solid axle in the front. I'm not entirely sure about that. I haven't had a chance to actually research that, but. Um, it does translate to a smooth ride. It's very quiet in here. The truck is actually relatively easy to drive once you get used to how big it is, how wide it is. This thing's like 84 inches wide. It's even wider if you guys go for the, the dually version of this truck. Very terrible turning radius, which is what I expected. Typical GM small block V8. I am a little surprised that they didn't just use the 6.2 liter V8 that's in the light duty trucks. I mean, that already makes 420 horsepower and 460 pound-feet of torque. Wouldn't it just been easier to just use that motor instead of develop a new, you know, 6.6? Granted, the bigger displacement torque in this engine is actually a little bit more, four more foot-pounds of torque, but not that much more versus what you got in the 6.2. So obviously the V8 is probably more to a price conscientious buyer, the, the gas V8 that is, because you save about $10,000 by going with the V8. It still doesn't have any actual fuel economy numbers by going with the gas engine because these heavy duty trucks aren't required to be, but you know, you've got really great steering. Uh, it's very light. It's also a little bit slower, which is good is what you want. The seats also, uh, they're not the most comfortable seats. Um, I don't particularly love the shape of them, but I love the fact that they're heated and cooled. And the big tow mirrors also make visibility a little bit easier in this thing. Uh, and it still has blind spot monitoring, but I'm just surprised it doesn't have any adaptive cruise control. So that's also an interesting omission on GMC's part. I imagine they're going to rectify that uh, for the 2020 mo 21 model year. But overall, um, very nice truck to drive. The gas engine is surprising. Um, most people are still probably gonna end up choosing the, the diesel and spending that extra 10 grand. And finally, because we are driving around in an HD truck, I figured I'd show you guys some towing. We've got 
probably like a 8,000 pound trailer behind us. Uh, there's actually a little Easter egg inside the trailer and for nosy journalists that want to peek inside, GMC actually even said you can just click on this little button right here and it shows you exactly what's in the trailer, which is a little spy shot of the upcoming 2020 Canyon AT4, which is coming uh, early next year. Of course, that view is only going to be shown for a couple of seconds while you're driving. If you'd like, you can kind of just hit the camera view here and it'll show you exactly what's behind the trailer. That is the transparent trailer view, which GMC is very proud of. It's part of the pro trailer grade um, stuff that you get with this truck. One of 15 different views that you can get, which is pretty cool. Honestly, when it comes to towing, GMC said that one of the questions they asked a lot of owners is what you know, what's the most stressful part of it? Obviously, it's the visibility aspect, and I'm not really much of a tower. I'm, I'd probably say I'm a novice tower, and I have to say, being able to see what's behind that trailer is a huge um, improvement over towing just the conventional way. I mean, uh, that allows you to see what's behind you, which is kind of interesting because you can see all the people that you're starting to slow or get stuck behind you, which can make it a little more ang anxious if you guys don't like people staying behind you, but. You know, that's just depending on the kind of driver you are. But I have to say, this truck makes towing an 8,000 pound trailer really easy. I mean, uh, the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel engine has plenty of power, plenty of torque. GMC actually said that uh, compared to the competitors, they've tuned this engine to offer all 910 foot pounds of torque in first gear, whereas a lot of the competitors, GMC says, they will limit the power in first gear. So that's kind of one of their advantages. Even though they don't have the most powerful engine in the segment, they said theirs is the most usable, and you're gonna notice that when you're kind of driving along. But I have to say that passing power is pretty good. I mean, this is not quite as heavy as the uh, trailer I was towing yesterday, which was like around 14,000 pounds, but this thing's kind of doing it in no sweat. You can easily, you know, keep the truck straight pretty well. Um, it rides really nice when it has all this extra weight. And the visibility in here is also really good. You've got these big tow mirrors. It's got the, it's got some driver assistance stuff in it, but no adaptive cruise, like I said. But uh, for somebody who's not used to towing very often, this makes it pretty easy. So uh, GMC gets a lot of uh, higher not our scores in innovation for me when it comes to uh, their trailering app. They just need to kind of apply the rest of that tech to their interior design since it's way behind some of the competition. So over the last few years, GMC has really been pushing their brand into a more of a niche premium truck and SUV segment. And with their latest crop of products, you can really see where they're taking the brand. Uh, but there are definitely some areas where I think that they could improve, specifically the interior. It just doesn't really look or feel like luxurious professional grade. It's got some great tech in it, but it's almost like GMC left it unfinished. I think they did a fantastic job with the styling of both of these trucks. I especially love the AT4 uh, trims. And I also love the new powertrains. The 6.6 .6 liter gas and diesel engine work extremely well with the HD and the diesel engine in the half ton truck also works extremely well. The 10 speed transmissions, they do a great job with keeping the engine in the power bank. And GMC has also addressed the ride quality. It handles really well. It feels extremely stable and confident when you're towing. So really they've got a lot of the basics down, especially for with truck buyers who plan to tow because GMC says with this kind of vehicle, about 90% of the buyers who actually buy these things actually do tow a load of 8,000 pounds or more. So towing is obviously very important for something like this. It's going to be interesting to see what the take rate is for the diesel of this truck. Now, speaking of which, you guys are probably waiting for an RPM rating. Because I have so little time with these trucks, I'm not gonna be able to do an RPM rating for this vehicle yet or the third vehicle that I'm going to also be filming at this event. So stay tuned for that when I get one of these or both of these cars uh, at a later date for a week to test where I can do a full battery of tests and do an RPM rating. So with all that said, let's talk about the pricing and the availability. Now, these trucks uh, are just about to go on sale. GMC says in the fall of this year, so in the next coming months. And they do have some pricing available, although it wasn't really the full complete pricing. Now, the one thing I'm gonna leave you with this truck in general with the diesel engine is a $2,500 option. So the cheapest one with the diesel is gonna cost around $47,000 for like an SLE trim with the crew cap configuration. That does make the light duty truck with the diesel more expensive than the Ram, which you can get the Ram at like under 40 grand with the diesel. In general, if you guys want the diesel for the competitors, it's gonna cost you about $5,000 more for the Ram and the Chevy. So GMC offering it 
um, for just $2,500 is a better deal versus the Ford and the Ram. I think I may have actually said Chevy there, not, not Chevy. Now the HD version of this truck starts at $40,000 right on the dot. It's about two grand more than the previous generation, which is a reasonable increase in the price considering what you get. This truck in general here is about $67,000. I was driving a 3500 earlier. That truck was almost $80,000 because remember, the Duramax diesel 6.6 .6 is about $10,000 extra. So this one here being 67, the other truck there was closer to 80 grand because of that 10 grand increase. Now, obviously these trucks have gotten expensive. The average transaction price of these things are really expensive, but that's kind of where the norm is because a lot of people will end up replacing luxury sedans for these big trucks. And when you saw the interior, how much space they have, all the capability, uh, the ability to go off road, just the outdoor lifestyle that they kind of portray. It's easy to see why people are upgrading from sedans to trucks like these luxury trucks. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview between the Sierra HD and the Sierra Light Duty with the diesel engine. If you guys are also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.